So my name is Alastair, I'm here from Western Digital and I'm going to talk about running other architecture, operating systems and applications on RISC-V using QMU. Um, before I go into that, the demos kind of take a long time to start up, so I'm going to start it up now and we'll come back to it later. So if you don't understand this, it's okay, we'll, we'll go through and explain what it is. So this is just starting RISC-V QMU on my, my x86 workstation and so it's just a, a standard Linux boot. And then once that starts up, we'll start QMU again inside it. And then I'll go through and explain what all that is if anyone's confused. Then. So don't, don't stress. I just want to show you that I'm starting it up. So what is QMU? So QMU is an open source emulation. It's not, it's, it's not a simulator, so it's different to Spike. It's different to other simulators like that. It's an emulator. It's focused on speed at the cost of um, accuracy. So it's not cycle accurate. It's, it's functionally accurate, but it's not cycle accurate. And it does this to, to get a huge speed benefit. So it's, it's generally, QMU is basically quicker than anything but an ASIC. So any FPGA implementation, QMU will be quicker than. Um, and on an ASIC, it can be the similar speed, sometimes generally a little slower. Um, and the way it works is it uses TCG, which is tiny code generator, to translate instructions. So it's based on a compiler, but it allows basically to translate different architectures from one architecture to another architecture. So in generally, let's say we're, you can translate your RISC-V instructions into x86 instructions on the fly, so it's a JIT. Um, and this is useful for embedded, it's very useful for embedded for ARM world and, and MIPS and RISC-V and things like that, because it means you can boot up a kernel and test it without having to boot a board. And have, it has great debugging opportunities. You can connect GDB to it and single step through your application and, and all this kind of cool stuff that is generally possible on a board, but a lot more difficult. So and QMU currently has RISC-V guest support. So you can start a RISC-V guest in QMU. So TCG is it's kind of magic. So I'm not going to go in, into it too much. Um, but it, it, it was originally a backend for a C compiler. And like I said, so it, it converts guest instructions or target instructions um, from, so RISC-V generally, or in this case, into kind of TCG ops, which then gets converted into the guest, the host architecture. So on the fly, like I said, on the fly, you can run RISC-V instructions on an x86 machine or, or anything, right? On an ARM machine or on a MIPS machine or anything that's supported. It also, at the same time, will emulate devices. So it, we have a full emulation for the, the PLIC. Um, and the sci-fi view art and things like that. So you don't, if you, if you have full support, you don't have to change your binaries. And you should be able to run the same binary on a physical board as well as a QMU model. And, and it currently supports a lot of targets. Uh, the obvious ones, ARM, Intel, MIPS, and, and PowerPC, Spark. And we have RISC-V support in mainstream for running RISC-V guests and support for running on a RISC-V host which is what this talk about is about uh, are currently RFC on the mailing list. So TCG also has this thing called TCI. And so the way QMU works is it has the back ends and front ends. So again, similar to a compiler. And so they can both be changed at compile time. So you can have a binary that runs on an Intel machine that translates RISC-V instructions. And at the same, in the same compile, you can build uh, something that runs on an ARM machine and translates MIPS instructions. So all this can kind of be interchanged, but it means you need to have a front end and a back end. Uh, so TCI is a back end for TCG that instead of generating host assembly instructions, generates interpreted kind of fake instructions that then are run through an interpreter. So this is slower, it's much slower than native TCG, but it allows you to basically support any host with pretty much no work. You just need a compiler and to build it in the first place. So I'm going to give a demo showing this, the TCI implementation, because that is pretty much already supported in mainline. And then I'm also going to give demos of the native implementation, which we are working on at the moment. After all this work and kind of figuring out what's going on, um, so why is this useful? So Kimmy also has this thing called Linux user space. And so basically what that means is you can run an, a RISC-V application on QMU on your x86 machine. So QMU will call into your host kernel 
but translate your user space application. And so this all kind of groups together and when we support RISC V host, it'll all kind of come out and, and all work. And so this is very useful uh, for compiler testing. Anyone who's done compiler testing, cross-compile compile testing, it's a great way to quickly test your application. So you, you make a change to GCC and you wonder if, is it gonna break my, I don't know, whatever, my, my rootfs applications that I'm excited about. And you can run it in QMU in user supposed mode without having to boot up a kernel and deal with that overhead and check it. Um, it also is useful for kernel compiler testing and kernel testing. So if you want to do things like that as well. And it just is a cool concept. It gives RISC-V the same capability as other architectures. It puts us up there with the other main architectures that, that everyone knows and uses. So back to my demo. So this is a, if anyone has questions, just stick your hand up too. Um, so this is my TCI demo. So this is, like I said, on my x86 machine, we're running a RISC-V QMU straight from mainline. So you can go and clone this today and it will just work. And we have a RISC-V, it's an open embedded environment because that's what I'm used to. Uh, so it's Linux booting with systemd and everything that you could ever need. And so in there, we are starting a emulation of x86 on RISC-V. Um, so it's QMU inside QMU. And we're starting this thing called Colibri. Uh, no one's probably ever heard of it. It's just a small GUI operating system. It, and the key here is small, <laughs> it's very slow. So I, I tried running something a little bigger and it, it never got there. So, and so this is running, it's been running since we started, I hope. And so it just has a VNC. So QMU also has a VNC server it can expose to give you access to the, the GUI environment of the guest. So we'll just connect to that. And it's up. That's why I started it early. Oh, unfortunately, the resolution's a little low here, so there is stuff down the bottom. Um, but this is a full-blown Intel-built operating system that I think only runs on x86, running on RISC-V, running on Intel. Um, <laughs> so to give you an idea, <laughs> of how slow it is, it's, it's gonna try and open it now. So it, it's, it's pretty slow. This is using TCI, so this is not optimized. This is um, an interpreter running on the back end there. And you probably, it, I think it's like six lines of code changed to a configure script to get this to build for RISC-V. So it, it, it's pretty straightforward. It, it'll take a, it will eventually open it. Um, yeah, <laughs> so it's not, not going to blow anyone away, but, but the process is cool. And oh, this one's all I want. So at the same time, I can SSH into my QMU guest, which is what I'm doing now. You see here, it says, it thinks it's a, a oh, I have a laser pointer. There, it's QMU virtual AMD. So it knows, or well, it knows it's running QMU, but it, it thinks it's running on x86. But at the same time, you can see we're running a, a RISC-V 64-bit RISC-V core. Uh, and you can see this is the proving that it's running in here. So yeah, so like I said, so it's Intel inside, X, inside RISC-V, inside x86. And there's no reason this shouldn't run on any RISC-V hardware. I just, I'm a QMU person, it's a lot easier for me to do stuff in QMU. So that's TCI. But I also wanted to prove, I also wanted to prove that we can do it without TCI. So this is the native port, so it, it should be quicker. So again, it's QMU booting up. Um, it's just a different root of S because build each root of S for each thing. The one that was running x86 on top of RISC-V, the back end there was TCI. Um, so it was generating interpreted instructions that were being interpreted into RISC-V. Uh, it, it's, it's, not super, it's not used very often, it's kind of like a prototype, it's not fully supported. Um, so don't like, go and deploy this and think it's the, the solution, you never have to buy an Intel chip again. It's, TCI is just like, more of a concept. For this one, we're running free DOS, and this is without TCI. This is full native, 
full native TCG. So, so you can see the C BIOS is booting here. Um, I said Linux, hopefully it tells me. I don't think it says x86, but, we're booting, but now we're booting free DOS. Um, unfortunately, we can't boot the same. This is RFC, it's not fully there yet, and it will hang if we try and boot the graphics stack. So we need to debug what's going on there. But this will eventually boot free DOS on x86, on RISC-5, on x86. Uh, so for the RISC-5 guest support, uh, the Sci-5 guys actually did it. They did it before I joined Western Digital, but they, is the, it's more than that. So it's the instruction set, it's just one part, but then there's things that you need to model the plick, you need to model the Sci-5 UART, you need to model, so stuff like that. So QMU has generic devices, like the Vert.io devices, so that helps. You can get away with a lot of stuff by kind of utilizing that, and the kernel already has support for that. Um, but there are some hardware-specific things you're gonna ha you have to model, and that also has to be done. It's not just the ISA. Um, so I guess I should also say, this isn't just me who, who's done this. There's been work from Sci-5, Michael Clark from Sci-5 helped, um, and Richard Henderson on the QMU list also helped. So it's, not, it's a lot of work to get this type of stuff to run. As you can see, it's booting now. Um, it's, like I said, it's slow, but that's free DOS booting on, on a RISC-V core. So it also works on 32-bit. I'm gonna kill this, because my 32-bit one's cooler. So I don't know if anyone's ever heard of TCC. It's a, a, a tiny compiler. It's smaller than GCC, and it's supposed to be super quick. And there's this thing called TCC boot, where basically you boot a Linux kernel source and TCC, and during boot, it will compile the kernel and boot it. So there's no pre-compiled kernel. And this is running 32-bit um, QMU RISC V. So 32-bit Linux fully works. It's the same tree. There's only some there's some glib C fork you have to use to get 32-bit support. But besides that, and then we're booting a 32-bit TCC, which is going to try and compile the kernel, a 32-bit x86 kernel, and boot that. So as you can see, it, it's it's getting there, we're almost there. We hope to have it probably in, maybe not the next release of QMU, but the one after that. Um, those last few bugs are really difficult to debug in a JIT. When a JIT seg faults on you, it's, it's extremely hard to figure out where and why, but most of the functionality is there. So um, I guess every example I have is x86, but mostly because they're easy to get images for. Um, but Theoretically, the way QMU is designed is once you have one works, they should all just work. So this should run ARM, MIPS, Spark, RISC-V, anything you want on top of the RISC-V backend once it works. I don't actually show it in my demo because I haven't, again, this is a work in progress, I haven't tested it, but it should give you Linux user space support. So that, it, that does have a huge benefit. Um, like I said, for compiler testing, it, it allows you to spin up RISC-V apps and test that. So that's, that is really useful. But yeah, I agree. It's not that, it's not that practical. It's a cool concept. I, I think it helps show that RISC-V is not just some gimmicky ISA and it can do the th same things the other ISAs can. Um, and one day if you have a RISC-V laptop, this could be cool to run your legacy Windows on it. But yeah, it, it's, you're right, it's a hard stretch. <laughs> It, it does have SMP support. I am not using it in any of these because I just do SMP1. But it should just work. And QMU has RISC-V and multi-threaded RISC-V support. So each CPU should be a separate thread, um, which QMU didn't used to have for every architecture. If you just do one layer of QMU, like a normal person would, then, <laughs> then, then you do, it is quick. It is, um, so if you run, just run RISC-V on x86, it's as quick as the sci-fi board. Yeah, if you start nesting it, it gets slower. But part of that is because we don't have, there's a lot of optimizations you can do and we're not there. So this is kind of like the first GCC port, it works, but it's not that great. And you can eventually from there, you can do a lot more optimizations and speed it up. So we're, step one is get it in, and then step two is make it quicker. So it can improve. I don't want to drag into someone else's time. So if anyone has any questions, I'm around, and I'm, I'll be around the WD booth so you can come and ask them.